Hey guys, welcome to Flight Top King. Hey, what happens when you have that leftover corned beef? Of course, corned beef hash. I think we got a good one for you. I'm starving. It's snowing. Whew. You guys watch this. All right, here we go. So this is the deal. You guys know that we did the uh, big Reuben Cuban the other day. Absolutely fantastic. That's where we actually smoked the corned beef and all that stuff. Last year, I really wanted to do this, but we just ran out of time. Um, this year, I said, absolutely, this is what we're doing. So let me show you what we got. I kept it like this so you guys knew that I'm like, you know, not lying. I, it's funny how many comments I get. All right. So I just took basically the flat of the corned beef. That's just the package that we bought. Braised it according to package instructions. I just got carrots. Maybe about a cup and a half of carrots. And I've got uh, basically like half of an onion that's just been large chunked. Uh, 275 for about, uh, maybe about uh, four hours. And I turned it down to 225 and let it just like calm down. That's when I put the potatoes in there for a couple hours. And that was in the oven. That was in the oven. In this. It was actually uncovered until I put it at 225. Okay. So 275 for about four hours. And basically what you're doing, you're just looking to break down that brisket to its tender. So let me show you. I went ahead and put the potatoes in there because I thought, mm, that to me just sounds like it's going to be fantastic. You just up the flavor game. So we got the corned beef left over. We got the potato left over. We got some carrots and onions we're going to use. We got some raw onion. And then right here, I have some raw potato. The other potato that I've just got peeled and diced, no salt, no pepper, no nothing. And those are actually done. So let me go ahead and strain that. <laughs> the benefit of cooking outside. Keep those on the skillet just for a minute. That's gonna help dry them out, okay? So that's one potato. Yes. There's my oil for today. It will not be used, I don't think. <laughs> I should have put it in the hot water. It's cold today, we're snowing. All right, very easy, very flavorful absolutely packs tons of flavor. So this is the idea. Got a little measure bowl or a little big old bowl to mix everything in. I'm gonna grate the potato, okay? I know you're thinking, to me, this is gonna act like the binder. All right, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. I kind of like the rustic of it. Rustic. What else? I say? I don't know. I don't, know. I don't think that even came out right. Okay. Throw those potatoes in there. Boy, the birds are noisy today. They're cold. They they can't find the worms are frozen. They probably pull them and break out of the ground. Or the worms are deep down in the ground. Uh we can go and start chopping. All right. My wife snuck some corned beef last night, I see. I did. It was I told so her good. not to. It was so good. We're just gonna dice this up, give it a kind of like a small dice. I wonder if it's still good. You think it's still good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so just so they know, this is cold right out of the fridge. Yeah. We about put, to be frozen. We put the whole pot in the fridge last night. Yep. And the reason why you do that after it cooled down a little bit. Yeah. You just allow those flavors just to reinduce themselves. The potatoes, the vegetables. I don't think this is one of the things where your technique matters. It doesn't matter if you chop it, dice it, cube it. It's all about texture and flavor. All right, that goes in there. And then I'm going to fish out the onions as much as I can. Even some carrots, because I don't think that's going to matter. And the white things in there are actually the like hardened fat. fat. Yep. Let's kind of make a mush out of that. Then I'm looking just for about like half of an onion. This is a very large onion. You know, so you're just trying to kind of like mix and match how much product you've got. Um, if you guys are interested lately, I just wanted to throw this out there. I know we got a lot of comments. Some comments lately have kind of caught me off guard. 
about my knives, how I care for them, what knives I use, how to find a knife, how do you start a knife collection. Um, if you guys are interested, just comment below. We're thinking about doing a knife uh, video. Everything that I know about knives, just like we would a griddle, all the pros, all the cons, what to look out for, the prices, how to care for them, how to sharpen them, kind of like knife 101. So if you guys are inter interested, comment below and we'll get that started. I know a lot of people reached out lately and it's been surprising. I know. <laughs> it seems like a lot of people are asking what knives you like. All right, so we got the shredded potato, the diced potato, the chopped up corned beef. We took some of that onion and carrot left over, and now we're just mixing it all together. From here, you want to taste. You might need to add salt. Depends on how much brine, how much liquid, what you did to your corned beef before we got to this stage. That could vary greatly. So we're just going to come in here and taste it. Looks like my ratio is off. I'd like to add more corned beef. <clears throat> <laughs> if your wife hadn't had a snack last night. <laughs> it's all right. You would like almost like a 50 to maybe 60, 40 ratio of corned beef to uh, potato. I could have kept some of it out, but I thought we'd have enough when I cooked it, but we'll be fine. All right, so here it's very simple. We can do a rustic style. Or we can play around with our little medallions if you want to impress. Let's go rustic. Okay, we're gonna use the medallion. Let's go whatever's the quickest, since today gonna, is a cold day. We're gonna use the medallions right here, so a nice knob of butter. Because you want that crunch on that exterior. Remember, you're kind of like frying a potato. So we'll do both. Is that your potato skin snack? Yep. Corned beef style. Corned beef loaded potato skins. Ooh. All right, plenty of butter. Obviously, you can use oil at this stage to help you out a little bit. If mine went frozen, I'd probably throw some down. And you just want to like a nice kind of like, I wouldn't say even layer. But you definitely want it to char. So you don't want it overloaded like height wise. A big mound. Alright, my girl's been on like kind of like a medium. It's one of those things where you gotta balance your time. It's extremely cold out here today. The potatoes already cooked, right? But you gotta make sure it stays on the griddle long enough to warm up the corned beef and cook those raw onions. So you don't want your griddle blasting too hot. You get the outside too done and then next thing you know, it's not done in the middle or the other side. So um, I've added just a little bit of butter spread out like on the tops. It's kind of melted in and out like this. So when I go to flip it, you get that nice crust. Mm. And just so they know, it, it was about 10 or 15 minutes yep. untouched yep. while it was cooking. Yep. All right, it won't take near as long to cook on this side, but you still want that crust. Kind of like a hash brown. You want it kind of crispy on the outside. We went through absolutely gallons and gallons and gallons in the Navy, that canned corned beef hash mix, all the stuff. Ugh, I... <laughs> I, I never, never liked it, never enjoyed it, never even liked making it. But there's some people that walked in every single day, and that's what they had. And they always wanted it crispy. I never had somebody walk through the line and be like, I want it, like, barely warmed up. It was always crispy with some eggs. All right, it's been about another 10 minutes. One of the things I preach all the time about hash browns, you got to be patient. Same thing with corned beef hash. You know, it's all about the hash brown. So... Try to drop in some over easy eggs, maybe some sunny side up.
And then we'll take our dome, with just a little bit of water. All right, so let's try to take some of this off. You know, if you want to do some post eggs, you definitely could. It's got that nice crunch on the bottom. Let's see if I can show you a picture right here. See that? Ooh. Yum. That's what I'm looking for right there. Mmm. All right, guys, there you go. That's the corned beef hash done the best way possible. You know, you can put a poached egg on top of there, scrambled eggs, any way you like it. Matt, got that hot sauce. Come back in, break that yolk, and just watch it just do its thing. Chicken wing. Mm. And that is what I've been waiting for for almost a year. <sighs> Makes you want to buy another corned beef. I can't remember what canned corned beef tastes like. I just know that I didn't like it. But if it's anything close to this, I was missing out. Mm. <laughs> mm. That is like a comfort food breakfast if I've ever seen one. Here. Mm. Oh, man. Mmm. Mmm. Holy cow. Mmm. Golly. Mmm. I mean, as good as it is, mm. I'm trying to think of like ways I can make it better. You got the hash browns crispy. You even mm. got some charness, some crispiness on the corned beef. The eggs are perfect. Mm. If you want to add a couple more vegetables in there, I'm sure you could. That's more like the traditional. Mm. I think I like the route of adding the carrot and the stewed onion and even that potato in the mix to up that corned beef flavor. That's just a personal preference. Oh, that's fantastic. That's what I absolutely <laughs> love about cooking. That's the first hash true corned beef hash I've ever made and I think I absolutely nailed it. I'd order that 10 times out of 10. That's phenomenal. All right, guys, there you go. We have a join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Check us out on the Griddle Group on Facebook. It's where we talk about griddles, where we get inspiration. And I'm telling you what, this one knocked it out of the park. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share with friends. Cold. Peace. Oh, golly, that's good. I think that's good. That is freaking good.